Welcome to the shortwave radio channel. Now I'm going to answer a question here, um, a little bit of a SDR um, for beginner um, series and mostly answering the basic questions that I get regularly that I hear all the time. And we're going to help demystify and help you understand a little more what an SDR is all about. So, first of all, a lot of people have portable radios and analog radios and desktop receivers and things like that. The SDR is also a radio. It receives signals like any other radio receives signals, but it is just different in the way that the output is going to happen and how it's controlled. So if you have a portable radio or a desktop receiver, most of them, except some really modern desktop receivers, which are technically SDRs or software-defined radios, you know, it's buttons that you push and knobs that you turn that control the electronic circuit for tuning around and for what you're going to listen to. And you have, you know, some have multiple bandwidths. These are all done through a manual way with the buttons on the radio itself. Now, an SDR, a software-defined radio, like I said, it's a radio. A lot of people have the impression, and I get that. I probably get at least one or two comments a, a month where it's going to say, well, you know, you're using this uh, Internet radio. And I'm, it's no, there's, nothing to, there's nothing to do with the Internet here. What you see here is an actual... Um, you know, reception from my own radio at my location in Montreal, Quebec, with my outdoor antenna on the back in the balcony, in the front balcony, an ML830. So there's this weird thinking that we're using the internet when we're using an SDR. And probably one of the reasons for that is the Kiwi SDRs that we use online, because those are actual radios in other parts of the world that we control through the internet. So maybe that's where the, the mix-up comes from. So these are actual radios in, in, in our homes that listen to here. The one that you see here, this is a software called SDR Uno, and it's controlling one that is the SDR Play RSPDX, which I have. It's a wideband radio. What is it that you see here? And how can it be interesting for anybody that's curious to maybe you know go and see what SDRs are all about. The main advantage of a software-defined receiver, okay, is first of all the amount of signals you can see at one time. And you might think, well, how can it do that? I don't understand. My my portable radio or desktop radio gets one signal and that's it. Yeah, because it's designed for that. But remember one thing: when your portable radio is working. So whatever it is, a Sony, a Texan, um, and so on, a Ethan, um, or an XH data, that radio actually receives everything all the time. It is receiving every signal all the time. But it can only have you listen to one at a time because by design. The tuning circuit gives you the one you choose that you pick on a frequency. Here, you have sort of the same design in a way, because what I'm listening to is Radio Romania 7375. <laughs> so I put the line here on 7375 on the display, and you can see here that there's a, there's a frequencies written all over the place here. So I'm tuning one, but I have the added bonus that I can see all around it. And depending on the one that you choose and you use, you can see more or less of the frequency range depending on the one that you have. For example, if I do this, I can start, you see here, I start at 6,400 on the bottom left and go up to 8,400 on the right. This is 2,000 kilohertz 
of visuals of what's on the shortwave bands. So it tells me that there's a signal right here by the line and by the peaks, which gives me the strength of the signal. And it shows me what I'm listening to here in the middle. And it shows me other signals all around it of all sorts of kinds. What's also interesting is that when you get used to these signals, what's going to happen, so let me just uh, go back here. When you tune these signals, you see that they have different shapes. They look at they look differently. This looks different than this and this. And after a while, you actually buy a visual just looking at it. Start understanding and making a difference between single sideband, CW, digital modes, AM signals, and so on. So that's a big advantage. The other thing about an SDR is the fact that it is ultra flexible. The radio itself doesn't have much in terms of you know controlling, um, for example, the audio. It's all data. So that little radio, apart from its receiver that's getting the signals, it's transforming all of that into a data stream. So there's no such thing as my SDR sounds bad, I'd rather have an analog radio, it sounds better. The bad of the SDR that sounds bad is because the software you're using is not giving you proper audio quality, doesn't have the filtering. It has to do with the software. It has to do with the quality of the speakers you're using to listen to also. So remember, there's no such thing as I'd rather have that SDR because it has better audio than this SDR. An SDR doesn't send audio, it sends data streams. The audio is then decoded by the software that you're using. And depending on the software, the computer's power, and the speaker, the quality of the speakers, you can have extremely good audio from an SDR also. It's all a question of using the different features and equalizer the noise reduction systems that they have. In reality, an SDR has way more possibilities than a standard portable or a desktop. And that's why a lot of people move on. Here, here you can see the uh, little sweeping that's going on. This is a uh, Iona sound. Uh, that's what makes the little twerp when you're listening to a signal. So uh, it's really a question of flexibility. The amount of things that you can do is multiplied by a million on an SDR. And depending on what you're going to do and what you want to do, um, SDR brings a different world. One of the questions that I hear all the time is, but, you know, I don't want to look at my screen to listen to Radio Romania. Well, that's also something that you got to think about it two seconds. We look at the screen of an SDR for one purpose, seeing the signals that are there. Maybe if we're searching for signals, we're looking at what's on the spectrum, trying to identify what's there. Uh, seeing the signal strength, like you would look at, uh, um, you know, for example, there's the S meter here up, up here on the right. You know, I'm going to look at that like I'm looking at an S meter in the radio. These are the times I'm going to look at the radio. But on a portable radio, when you listen to something, what do you do? You leave the radio there and you do something else and you listen to the audio. This is the same thing that's going to happen here. You actually will not look at the screen to listen to a station. You'll just leave it there and do something else and listen to the audio like any other radio. Um, I, I don't understand how people you know have this impression that you have to look at a screen to listen to a radio station. It has nothing to do with that. It's like standard radios. You know, once you tune the signal and you've seen how strong it is and so on, you don't look at your portable radio all the time while you're listening. You're listening and you're doing something else. The same applies to an SDR. Um, and so this is a different world, but it's a world controlled by a computer because an SDR, the controls are all done with software. There's different software. Some people like one over the other. It's more of a personal thing. Sometimes it could do with one specific feature one software has over another. But it's a great world to explore and to have fun. And if you're a computer kind of 
um, you know, computer enthusiast. You like using computers, playing around with them. You like radio at the same time. This is cool because it brings both worlds together, and it's kind of a lot of fun to uh, to dabble in and to try. So um, that's a quick explanation of SDRs. If you have more questions on SDRs, don't hesitate to um, put your question in the um, comments below because um, I'll be looking at all the comments of everybody on the different videos. Um, you know, brushing up my list of questions and, and answers for more videos. So uh, don't hesitate. Like we say, there aren't any dumb questions. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.